so very warm welcome once again to my youtube channel simulation engineer so i come up once again with a new video to, so today's video will be about a cfd validation study it's once again um, a series of star ccm plus hands-on tutorial so i will be doing on or performing a hydrodynamic flow uh, over darpa suburb geometry it's a very famous test case and uh, the test case which I have chosen from the series of test cases it's a fully appended test case and uh, by using CFD or star CCM we will predict the resistance force at different speeds and our CFD results then later on will be compared with the experimental data before we really proceed uh, uh, with the procedure or the setup for this tutorial there are two references. Uh, if someone is really interested in reading this literature and you, if you wanted to uh, model the geometry, there are the two test cases. Uh, for example, there are two model numbers and we have uh, these two technical reference documents or reference papers which are available easily. By the way, I will also put down the link in the comment section so you guys can uh, download it if you are interested. So as always, I'll be starting uh, with my tutorial scheme. So the tutorial or the live demo, I normally call it. I'll be starting with geometry modeling, followed by meshing, solver setup and simulation, the results, and in the end, uh, we will conclude our tutorial session. So the geometry modeling, um, we will see the, uh, the geometry, uh, to the, the import the geometry. In this case, it's an IGS file which I will import and then I will perform the Boolean operation to uh, reduce the size of the computational domain because um, it is a symmetrical body fully. So we will be just solving half of the domain, half of the body. So we will be just using half of the computational domain. Okay, so for our fully dependent test case, um, these are the essential parameters for this geometry. You can see it's an, uh, it's fully really um, asymmetric hull, and it's a fully appended test case. So we have uh, our sail plane here available, and then we have upper low rudder, and similarly the hydroplane. So on the aft side and the stern. So this is the parameters. Overall length is about 4.356 meters. Then we have uh, the length uh, between you can call it normally the, the perpendicular is a maximum diameter which is of the hull is this one then we have our surface or, or the area and then we have the volume so um, as a general rule uh, normally i mean uh, this is not really a standard uh, a standard way you can even this could even uh, be used as a, not really i would say a universal universal rule or whatever you can call it it's just based on the experience and my personal experience so you can stick to, for example, five lengths upstream of the body and eight lengths, um, even you can go to 10 lengths and then um, up and down. So it's about five lengths. And this should really be enough and this should normally doesn't give you a problem. Okay, uh, f for the cases which you are really taking into account the, the free surface effects, like if you wanted to do a multi-phase simulation, which is not the case here, uh, then obviously it's um, all about uh, you know the the draft of your ship or if, if you have a submarine in that case it's a totally different story and then uh, normally if you're taking also into account free surface effects then we need to model probably model the free surface effects or um, if you wanted to do some testing or CFD results uh, at different uh, depths of a body then obviously uh, this will this length will change yeah. Then I will be assigning the boundaries. So uh, it will be inlet, velocity inlet, and outlet. It will be pressure outlet. Then uh, our center plane, or if you want to call it front plane, so symmetry, it will be symmetry. Also, the top, bottom, and the back plane, it's also I, I will be modeling a symmetry plane. And uh, the, the body or the DAPA. Uh, itself the body is will be a viscous wall so it's a no slip boundary condition okay so now I will move on uh, to the geometry modeling part uh, or better to say uh, how to really model the fluid domain I will move on to star CCM 
So I am in the geometry modeling at the moment and you, here you can see this um, model or a complete full 3D model of a, of a DARPA suboptimetry geometry of this fully appended test case. So the geometry is modeled in such a way that um, I have uh, like defined the patches separately, meaning um, I have a hull. So I have, let's say, the left appendage on this side. And then you have uh, the lower part of the rudder. We have the right appendage. I have the sail, which is this one here. And then I have the upper rudder. Obviously, we'll be just modeling uh, half of the domain. So we're using the symmetry boundary condition to really save the computation resources because we are not taking into account any yawing effect. So if the flow is coming at specific angle, so this is not taken into account or for this test case and the results, uh, it is not, uh, it is really done without any yaw. So uh, there is no effect of like a beta angle. So we will be solving half of the domain. And the reason of dividing uh, the uh, surface into several patches, uh, uh, that is uh, been done deliberately to facilitate the meshing. Because later on when I will be performing the surface meshes, I'll be defining different surface mesh sizes on different structures. So to really get um, fine mesh and uh, local kind of a refinement effect. Yeah, so always make sure that whenever you are modeling a geometry and before prior to meshing, you need to plan your strategy for meshing, how you really want to do your mesh because simply just doing a blind mesh will not help you at all. Okay, so this is the one uh, we have it here and then uh, I can go and click, uh, uh, right click in the features and I will say I wanted to model a block. So that will be my fluid domain. So let's say we take it about 80 meters in the x direction, 40 in the y, since y up and, to uh, and bottom and uh, just 20 meters. Uh, in the Z, Z direction so as we will just modeling half of the domain and we will take let's say 20 meters if we take the origin so that it will be accordingly it will be performed like accordingly so I would say this is our body tool so if you really see now so this is uh, somewhere our body is looking like if you want you can also uh, uh, change this thing uh, of uh, the center of your body if you go to the features part you can go here and you can say okay maybe it's a little bit too much um, upstream distance is really very few so you go there change it to 10 meters and upload and again update once you update that one so it looks uh, quite quite good yeah so but let's say i will just stick with the 20 which is i think good enough all right so now we have our two bodies available so this is the complete full model you see it's uh, protruding out since i'm just uh, modeling half of the domain now the next step is to do a boolean operation so you will select both of these uh, bodies yeah and then before we do that, I will select first of all bodies from here. Now you right click over there and you go to boolean and say subtract. So most of the cases star system will automatically detect. So the green one is our target body and the red one is our, uh, it's the body which we want to subtract because we just wanted to, or want to get the impression of the surface over there. So we will simply say, yeah, okay. So it's, it's, it's good. We are happy with this one and we also can rename it. We call it fluid. So we have our faces available. Remember, we already have our uh, patches uh, for the summary. Now we would like to do some patch definition for the domain. So this is my inlet. And this will be my outlet, right? So this is my inlet and outlet. Then I have uh, my top part. So, and this is my 
symmetry part and this will be my bottom patch and this is the back one so you can call it back or the side wall or the far field whatever you want it to call I just simply name it as back wall so that's about it um, we have now completely fully uh, defined our surface patches required for later on for the definition of the boundary conditions and um, I think this is at this stage it's uh, looking everything quite uh, quite good or quite fine so once you are happy with this one you close your 3d CAD option so we are here so now I need to define a geometry part so that I can start with my meshing so I will say new geometry part normally uh, I, I as a standard practice I use um, tessellation density to fine because this will give you much better results and uh, the, the geometry is really tessellated with the fine density so it's still sometimes you have small small details uh, which uh, by using let's say medium tessellation density of course this will not be discretized properly so I will use uh, the fine tessellation density and once it's done so I think this part is now not required anymore so we have our fluid geometry available here so if you click now the geometry you should be able to see in a minute so if I will say the geometry right so if you see now the top part and this is this is your complete fluid domain right so this is you, you can see it out here see that it's uh, just half of the part so the other part so this is our geometry is sitting residing here just half of the domain and half of the geometry yeah so okay so now before we really start with the meshing uh, one needs to always assign the parts to the regions yeah so we will define our region first before meshing so I will say I, I just have one region and I will like to define a, a boundary for each part surface and I will rest you simply default and make sure that you this part is selected and you say apply done it's finished now before or prior to meshing it's very important here that we need to define the proper boundary conditions because this uh, will play an important role in our meshing for example if you don't define you define your region and you are not defining these patches properly because as default always it takes uh, all the patches as walls so everywhere it will be generating prismatic layers right on all the surfaces which is, which is something which we don't want so we will go to the back as I have you seen in the slides uh, before and we have a symmetry plane and the top plane we define all these as a symmetry plane and then we have our hull we have our left appendage lower rudder sail we all take it as a viscous wall which is fine we go to the inlet patch it will be defined as velocity inlet then we have an outlet this will be defined as pressure outlet okay so by so till this point I think it's really good to go and uh, the next step will be the meshing so before we really uh, dive into the meshing session I will once again want to show you some slides for meshing uh, how I will be doing the meshing and what kind of uh, necessary parameters or settings we will be using for our mesh generation so this is where we left so I think uh, this is now clear we have used our uh, defined our or assigned all the boundary conditions now we will move on to the meshing part so I will be sticking with the the, the trimmer meshing uh, strategy which I think is really well suited since the flow is kind of aligned so it's really good for such kind of flows if the geometry is much more complex uh, you can mostly uh, I usually prefer the polyhedral meshes but for such uh, test cases even if you wanted to do uh, some some free surface um, simulations uh, this is really preferred over the polyhedral meshes so I stick with the trim meshing with the obviously with viscous uh, 
layers or prism layers and I'll be doing some local mesh refinement around the, the all the appendages so the sail hydroplanes and the rudder so these are the meshing parameters uh, uh, those of you guys who are already familiar with star ccm so I'll be using the prism layer mesher settings so which is this one so stretching function everything is really default uh, there are some things uh, I have reduced the minimum thickness percentage to about one this is something and uh, re layer reduction percentage so I did it deliberately because uh, we will see later on that uh, all the trailing edges of the appendages or the hydroplane or the rudder or the sail I will show you in a minute uh, to you guys that they are really uh, sh sharp trailing edges so it's not really anyone is uh, the blunt trailing edges so the geometry is model based on this reference paper I have said and uh, the, these uh, all these profiles are really uh, have uh, having uh, sharp trailing edges so these kind of settings normally help and uh, I have changed the boundary marching uh, angle which is I think default value is about 50 so with this it will also help you especially in uh, those areas where uh, the appendages are really combining or interacting with the hull so this is really a very very crucial area most of the mesh uh, generators sometimes fail in these areas you need to sometimes take care of all these settings uh, and uh, I'll be just taking just a number of six number of prism layers and the prism layer stretching I will stick to 1.2 and a target size of uh, let's say percentage of 50 percent so I'll be starting with my smaller base size and um, the minimum surface size these are the parameters I'll be using and the prism layer total thickness so I'll stick, let's say if you take the absolute size so 16 percent of your of your base size and uh, in, in, in absolute terms uh, the 16 percent uh, is like 0 0.02 meters okay so I will be defining uh, Geometrical sources are using geometrical sources to define uh, like prop mesh refinements in these areas So this is for example the sail and you see it's a really sharp trailing edge because if you don't do that You will not get the proper uh, discretization or mesh refinement or mesh density in these regions Which could cause some some sometimes it would not generate your boundary layer or there are certain problems and maybe later on you will get convergence issues so, and uh, these are the parameters of this sail volume geometry I named it at sail wall so it's a sail volume so you have a starting uh, start coordinate and end coordinate so it's it's uh, it's a cone yeah so you can because uh, it's really very handy if you use the cone geometry uh, in such kind of uh, mesh refinement strategies similarly I am using for all these other appendages so I will I call them so upper rudder with appendage 1 volume appendage 2 volume is a lower rudder appendage 3 is the is the hydroplane so and these are the coordinates for modeling uh, or to <coughs> specify this uh, geometric resource geometrical uh, sources okay and um, I think till that point it should be it should be fine now I will move on and show you guys uh, how to do the meshing so let's move on to star CCM once again okay so now we will start with our meshing so the first step will be you go to this uh, operations uh, section right click say new meshing automated mesh and uh, this is our fluid so by the way I have um, already defined these um, four geometrical sources which I have already shown you the coordinates and uh, the parameters in in the slides so you can get all these parameters also from there so we use surface uh, surface measure as uh, our core volume measure it's a trimmed cell measure and the boundary layer measure which we'll be choosing is the prism layer measure so and don't forget to select your fluid domain you say okay so that's done and then we will move on to the surface remesher there is uh, no need to do any kind of changes here okay and uh, once uh, we you are here so rest to I will stick with the default settings and if you guys remember the slides I have shown you that uh, 
I'm simply using minimum thickness as one and layer reduction percentage, which is something which I'm doing deliberately. Obviously, these are the things uh, it really comes uh, with experience, you know. If you're not really used to, you don't know these expert parameters, I would not recommend changing them. Just stick with the default values, okay? So go to the default controls and the base size is about uh, 0 0.125, which I, I am using. And target size, I will use it uh, about 50%. For the minimum surface size, uh, I want it to have, uh, let's say about seven millimeters, seven point eight millimeters. So minimum surface size based on the curvature and of the geometry shapes. And surface growth rate, I would like to define a spec user specifier. I would go or opt for a very small or a slow surface growth. So number of prism layers is about six. If you remember the slide, I have used that. I have shown you all the parameters. So total thickness in terms of absolute value, or if you want to go, let's like do it this way. So 16%, it's about 0.02 meters. Volume growth rate, I will stick to the slow one because this will give you a nice transition of elements from very fine to very coarse. Maximum cell size, um, I think it's about 1600. I'll show you later on. Uh, and then I'm defining some, some surface controls. So first of all, let's say we will define, uh, I'll name it as surf hull. So this is for the hull and I will choose the part geometry of the hull, which is this one. Once it is selected, so I will say, I just want you to define surface mesh refund, which is this in this case. So just customize this value. I don't want to stick with the parents one. I will use some customized value. So we will say now um, it goes, let's say about 25%. I think this should be okay for this hull geometry. So that's everywhere, it's almost getting the same. And then we will move on to another one, which is, uh, you can call that surf uh, sail. Right, so it's, uh, then we will select our sail patch, which is this one. Uh, you see how, I mean, it's really um, helping me now uh, to generate the meshing or let's say to customize meshing. So you can uh, define your uh, surface meshes uh, on different patches, different surface mesh sizes, which is very good in capturing the local features and also performing or the capturing the geometry properly with the discretization. Uh, let's say I'll stick with uh, 12. Then the minimum, we say we want to go to 6%. So yeah, this, is, this should be good. And then the third and the last, uh, one which will be for the appendages and these are all in really in the trailing edge section of the hull so we call the surf appendages and now i will select all the appendages so it will be your upper rudder lower rudder and the left appendage so we have all our three appendage geometries see that right so this is the one we will be choosing now and uh, I have to define it a little bit finer compared to even the sail plane. So I go there. Now I will say this goes from 6% to about 2 or 3. Let's take 3. Now I think this should be, this should be good. So once we have defined this one, I um, already shown you that um, now comes uh, the important part because I have defined these geometries as per uh, the coordinates I've mentioned in the slides prior to starting with the real session. So you can see these are the uh, geometrical sources and this will be used to really properly uh, resolve uh, the trailing edges. So it's really um, sharp trailing edges. So they are, I think you can see it here properly. These are not really any blunt trailing edges. You can see that. Similarly, if you go there and see the the sail, so I have like uh, so this is for the sail volume, and then we have uh, appendages, which can be seen here. So we'll be taking the geometric resource source for 
all these three appendages and I'll be using the same settings for all of these so let's say we will call this as uh, volumetric control uh, we will call it as uh, volume appendages for example and I will take the parts as appendage 1, 2, 3 all the volume appendages and I just wanted to use the surface remesher. I will turn this on in the customize setting and go there and I will define the, like 0.5 uh, if you take. No, it's sorry, it's, it's, it's wrong. Okay, yeah. 0.5 meter, it should be okay. Similarly, I will define now another one rename it I will call this as sale so now I need to change or select the proper one sale volume so volume sale and I think the settings should be okay and once you are really okay with this settings uh, then we will perform over meshing okay yeah, I think now it's almost all the steps, necessary steps are okay and uh, I will start now the meshing. So you click this generate volume mesh button. It will take a little bit of while. So the moment uh, the meshing is finished, I'll come back again and show you how the mesh looks like. So see you till then. By the way, before we really start with the real meshing, I think this, this is um, kind of... Um, it's just an error or uh, from my side I apologize for this one uh, because I shuffle I change interchange the values it has to be 0.1 percent of your base because otherwise you won't be getting properly uh, resolved uh, trailing edges so I think this is this is okay so I will now once again start the volume machine so see you then all right now we can see that the meshing is really finished it's uh, completed been successfully done and we have about approximately 2 million cells yeah it's about 2.3 million grid points now to visualize the mesh we will create a new mesh scene once the mesh scene is created so you can see this is the way it looks like let's say bring it in a proper orientation let's close this thing I'll show you guys the mesh, how it really looks like. See, that's the one I was talking about. We have our boundary layer going on. It's really very nicely done. And throughout the hull, and especially, uh, this is really the region which normally sometimes, if you really stick, uh, use the default settings, uh, uh, most of the meshes normally get some problems in these junction areas but uh, Sarsicium comes up with uh, quite uh, quite a good good mesh here and this is our upper rudder and the lower rudder yeah and this is the mesh refinement uh, so this is the kind of a strategy if in your case you really have some sharp trailing edges how to resolve this or rectify such problems if you don't get the prism layer here in these regions so at least you get very fine meshes so based on the the later on the solver or the tabulous model you use you can get then um, quite a good and reasonable solution so once now uh, we are happy with our mesh I think this is it's looking quite good uh, and it's uh, really a nice mesh uh, so the next step will be to go on and define our solver settings so we will right click on this physics continuum select models so we will choose uh, since it's um, it's a water so it's a liquid uh, and we will be choosing um, our segregated flow solver and constant density it's a steady state simulation fully turbulent flow i'll stick with a k omega turbulence model and it has been uh, now taken the account for all y plus uh, ball treatment meaning it's not really a low reynolds number turbulence model or high reynolds number so it's it is taken into account based on your meshing so um, 
it will it will really uh, solve your solution and uh, based on the empirical formulation uh, you will really get uh, quite a good and reasonable solution this is my personal experience with star ccm plus so once you're really happy here you simply close this window and after that uh, we need to define our proper parameters which is for example in this case um, if you go to your model section and you go to the liquid and water properties so these are kind of um, really important settings which i will go into detail later on so let's go back once again to the slides uh, and see how we'll be setting our solo setup and what kind of uh, different speeds we'll be using so let's move on to the uh, slides. This is uh, where we left last time. So we, we have seen that our mesh is really looking very fine. So this is once again uh, some slides uh, to show you the, the mesh, some close-up view of the submarine. And uh, once again at different sections, uh, further enlarged views. So this is um, the mesh around the submarine and this is uh, once again around uh, or in the region of the sail plane and then we have your hydroplane and your rudders uh, this is how the mesh is looking like and then we will move on to the solo setup and simulations so we will see how we can find initial conditions turbulence specification and the force monitor so the flow conditions or the initial conditions it's a steady state solver segregated flow treble intensity i will stick with the treble intensity and viscosity as a turbulence specification method so throughout the simulation for all different speeds i will be using uh, this um, density of water and um, one thing which is uh, worth mentioning here is that uh, <coughs> excuse me if you uh, whenever you choose a different velocity so you need to get some proper or a desired Reynolds number so you need to make sure that you get uh, the proper dynamic viscosity or in terms of uh, and the density and uh, the viscosity because uh, Reynolds number it is a combination so it's uh, the ratio of inertial forces to your viscous forces so you need to make sure that you do prep proper parameters in terms of viscosity so that you get your desired Reynolds number on the specified velocity otherwise uh, if you just simply keep on changing uh, the velocity and uh, do your computations and then you will say okay my results are not matching so that it, it's kind of unphysical then yeah you're then not properly uh, resolving or uh, uh, solving your solution not on the exact parameters yeah so as i've shown you earlier how to set up the physics continuum or the fluid continuum we have used all these parameters and sst uh, k omega turbulence model will be used to solve the turbulence all right now let's start with our um, first computation it is uh, for the velocity of about about three meters per second and this is really the, velo the viscosity which we will be requiring to achieve our desired Reynolds number which is about 12.4 uh, million so I've already shown you the slide on the computation runs we, we, we will be performing so we'll be doing about six computations at different speeds to get different Reynolds and so it's so better to say a different Reynolds number so this is the only parameter you define it and you just you need to adjust that so like you just make sure that your material properties are properly set to get the desired Reynolds number at uh, your desired speed and we will now change our initial condition to 3.046 so that's the first run then I will move on to the boundary condition section and I will use uh, so for the inlet part we will stick with the flow uh, let's say the turbulence specification method intensity and viscosity ratio so it's default is one percent turbulent velocity ratio or viscosity ratio of 10 so we will define the once again so 3.046 so it's it's done now uh, in order to monitor the drag force or resistance force uh, we need to define um, a force monitor so how you do that form force monitor you just go to the reports part click right click over there say new and then you will say force so and um, in this case you will define the parts so you want to do the track force monitoring i will be choosing so all these walls so it's like your rudder your sail 
your lower rudder, left appendage, and uh, the hull. So you have all the the parts uh, of uh, the DARPA subgeometry. Once it is defined, um, and uh, you can see, make sure that the direction is in the proper direction, which is okay. So it's it's in this direction. Yeah. So this is the direction, moving direction of this one. So, which is good. And uh, that's about it. Once you have this set up, you will create create a monitor and plot from the report. So it will open a new window. So once it has been set, and uh, you need to define also the maximum number of steps. Let's say 1,000. We stick with it. It's okay. And the rest is, uh, I think, all finished. It's properly set up. You don't need to do any further settings. We have defined our turbulence model our material parameters in terms of uh, density and uh, dynamic viscosity to get the proper Reynolds number and by the way I will be starting uh, the first run and I will be taking uh, the last run as a restart solution for my next computation so once all the computations are finished I will show you guys the results and um, so first of all you just initialize your domain once you initialize the domain Take just a second and it's finished and then you simply click on run, right? And then uh, the simulation or the computation will start to run. Okay, then I will see you guys uh, in, in several minutes once uh, all the computations are finished. So, okay, um, just um, a repetition once again. Uh, I did... Uh, complete uh, the computation matrix so for all these computations it's about uh, six computation runs so I will show you now the convergence history and uh, the force monitor and in the end the comparison so I will be starting with the residuals force monitors and then uh, resistance curve comparison so this is the total convergence history for all the computation runs so as I mentioned earlier that I will be starting uh, the next computation runs always uh, taking the restart from the previous uh, converged solution so this is uh, now the the first one so you see this is the first iteration for uh, computation run then we have the second one uh, and then we have this third one fourth fifth and sixth and we can see it's really converging very well uh, almost about 1 e to the power minus 4 if you really go to the next slide so this is now the convergence history of the force monitor that is our resistance or drag force whatever you want it to call for all each computation run we can see by having a look at the drag uh, force or the force monitor history that uh, it's really leveled out it's an indication that's really very well converged our required parameter so now if we really do the direct comparison between the experiments and the cft the results are looking really very very good i mean it's really a marginal error uh, if we compare the cfd and experimental results so you get what you are seeing here on the x-axis we have uh, the velocity in terms of our let's say the computation runs and on the y-axis we have uh, the resistance which is measured in newtons so for the even for the low velocities and you keep on going to the higher velocities uh, we really have a very very good agreement if we really uh, see this in terms of uh, like uh, direct uh, quantitative, uh, um, I would say analysis, or we go a little bit deep and to compare absolute error or the relative error uh, for each velocity computation and also their uh, related uh, corresponding Reynolds number, we can see that um, the CFD is uh, predicting the resistance uh, curve um, very very well with the minimum absolute uh, error so in general normally if you have five to eight percent error compared to the experiment it's acceptable so we are already uh, now within this even five percent range so it's maximum error uh, you can see it's about three percent three point six percent and um, yeah by having a look at the results it's uh, uh, very good uh, prediction and uh, we can say this this CFD validation study also proves that uh, by using star CCM plus and uh, the trimmer mesh 
and also the the choose uh, choose in turbulence model SST K Omega from Mentor. It's really working really well uh, for such type of flows. So we can now con conclude or summarize our tutorial session. We have learned how we can model that. So model in terms of uh, computational domain and how we can mesh the submarine geometry and how and what are the necessary solver settings and what kind of boundary conditions are required to, to perform this hydrodynamic external flow type and the use of obviously incompressible flow solver and we have you stick to the segregated solver and how you can do the post processing and examine the results in terms of residual plots and force monitor yeah i think with this i conclude my today's video session and as always uh, uh, once again a reminder or a request uh, to not uh, don't forget uh, to like the channel and subscribe my channel if you haven't done it until now if you have already subscribed then please share my channel among your colleagues friends or family if you think that it's really uh, worth doing it then please do it and I will uh, just ask you guys to keep supporting me and uh, thanks a lot uh, for having your time and uh, if you feel anything or if you have any comments or any anything which uh, you are not clear about just uh, let me know in the comment section and uh, yeah with this i wish you guys a very nice day take care bye bye